Well, no, no, we'll, I'll show you that, right? Okay, so Hahn and Strassman pr pretty much Fermi discovers that the, really the way to do uh, nuclear reactions is neutrons. Neutrons are the key. And the reason that neutrons are so good is that basically a nucleus will just ingest a neutron. In fact, with a neutron, the trick is to slow it down enough, right? A neutron can just wander into a nucleus, whereas alpha particles and deuterium and all those things are positively charged and are repelling, right? So it's like, it's like trying to put uh, clothing on an infant that you know, doesn't want to be dressed, right? Little floppy like noodle arms and you're like trying to put clothing on, right? It's like same thing, right? You've got these positively charged particles and they, they repel each other and they're very hard to get them to go together. But a neutron, well neutrons are just, you just, they just wander right in, you know? Okay, so, so he discovers many, many nuclear reactions, Fermi does, right? In 1938, Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann discover that they can split uranium in half, okay? And this is just a typical reaction. This is not every single reaction that goes on in a nuclear fission reaction is not this exact reaction. In fact, it's so chaotic that there's hundreds of different reactions that go on. In fact, there's series of reactions that go on, okay? The thing that's interesting, and there are two things that are interesting about this reaction, okay? But here's, here's a little picture of it. And they show this thing sort of like these oil drops because that's what you should think. These big nuclei are sort of blousy, right? Um, they show the neutron coming in there. Notice there's two things that are interesting about this. The first thing is that it releases a tremendous amount of energy. Every reaction releases about 200 million electron volts. Now, let's look at trinitrotoluene. That, re that releases on the order of tens of electron volts of energy on the order of tens. This is releasing 200 million electron volts of energy per atom. And there's a lot of atoms in there, yes? Okay, so this is an amazing thing. If this is really true, that's a tremendous amount of energy, much more than a conventional explosive. Thing number one. Thing number two, notice that this reaction is caused by a neutron and generates more neutrons than needed, right? It generates neutrons. Couldn't those other neutrons start another reaction? Couldn't this be a chain reaction? Ooh, right? Why does it release neutrons? Why do the lighter elements not have as many neutrons? We just looked at a graph, didn't we? Doesn't neutron number just like balloon as you go into the heavier elements have relatively more neutrons than the lighter ones, right? Why? Because that's the only way you can make them stable. So as you go down and go like halfway to like stable, or something like that, right? You, you, you don't need those neutrons. They're not part of the stable nucleus, right? Um, because you, they're not needed. And so they're free moving. And in general, by the way, they're going so fast that you've got to slow them down to sustain one of these reactions, right? Well, gee, you know, uh, here's the tournament, right? Uh, we start off here, Newberg plays uh, uh, Roseburg. Yeah, you know, and, uh, no, wait, wait, it's going this way. It's going this way. Now here's the championship team, right? No, yeah, like this is it. You know, it's exactly this, right? All those neutrons given off um, can start a chain reaction. This is a very startling sort of thing because a very small amount of uranium-235 is a lot of boom, yes? Well, no, it doesn't create more, but it could split more, right? The notion is in the other words. The neutrons from it, right? Okay, yeah. So it very, they very quickly realized that you could make a very large bomb with this, yes? Okay. What? No, they're actually going pretty fast. In fact, they're going too fast to effectively be like used for this whole thing, right? So um, I actually have brought in a small piece of, uh, of nuclear material. I don't want you guys to be too scared. This is something that's generally deemed to be safe. Okay. Come on over here. Um, it's a, a small amount. I just want to emphasize that this is a small amount. We only have actually, and I've got it inside this, this, this shielded thing here, right? But this is a small amount of, of nuclear fissile material. Okay. Now I know it looks, we're looking at it through an electron radiocardiograph, okay? Um, which is actually magnifying it, but the nuclei actually look like ping pong balls, which is kind of an amazing thing, right? And here I've got a free neutron, and I'm going to uh, drop the neutron on there. Are we ready for this? Whoa! Holy 
Holy cow! <laughs> now I'm totally cheating, okay? I'm totally cheating because I put them in this thing and the ping pong balls couldn't get out and of course they're gonna set off each other, right? Okay, but imagine if we had a room big enough, right? If I just had those, chances are I would set off one trap and the ping pong ball would go away. It would never encounter another uh, trap, right? And it wouldn't set it off, that wouldn't sustain a reaction, right? But, but imagine if we kept putting them in a room and the room got bigger and bigger. Eventually the ping pong ball is going to encounter another trap, correct? This is the concept of critical mass. You've got to have enough of it so that released neutrons are likely to interact with another nucleus. If it's small, they'll just escape from the sample, yes? Okay. What about if we had a bunch of things that were not set traps, but were like sprung traps, right? Then if you had enough of those things that were not sprung, then you couldn't sustain a, a chain reaction, couldn't you? Right? No, if, if enough of them were not set, correct? Right? So this is the concept of purity, right? Is you've got to have enough uranium-235, it's got to be in the right concentration to sustain a reaction. And these are all things that we could calculate, right? That's why they, you know, like Iran is trying to... Enrich their uranium, right? They've got to get it to a certain purity before it can be made into a bomb. The stuff that we put in nuclear power plants is purposely not and pure enough to be made into a bomb for obvious reasons, right? You don't want it to explode, and you don't want anybody to be able to explode it, right? So, so those are two things that we'll talk about next time, is this critical mass, having enough of it, and then having it pure enough, right? Um, there we go. little applause for that. Yeah! Setting that up, have you ever like set them off on accident and they go off on you? Yeah, I've had one or two, and you know, just go off. But it, the thing is, without the thing over it, they they just fly off and. You know. um, I won't be here on the okay, uh, we're doing a pre quiz. You could pick the pre quiz up. We've got it over here. Yeah, please erase that and put the numbers up if you would. Left in English. I was looking for it. Thanks, Jordan.